So today we're going to put this all back together, <laughs> and we're going to make sense of yesterday, which was confusing, of course. And I, and I warned you it would be confusing. Today it's going to be less confusing. So before we start with actually practicing some of the electron configuration, I want to remind ourselves of the things we learned yesterday that we need today. And that is, there are four different orbitals, right? Or four different sublevels that we said. What were they? Oh, S, S, P, P D, D, and F. F. Okay? SPDIF, or science is pretty darn fun. Yeah. Um, so there's four of those. The S has how many orientations around the nucleus? Zero. One. One orientation, which means we draw it as one line, right? The P had, and how many electrons will an S orbital hold? Two electrons. Uh, the P had how many orientations? Three. And it holds how many electrons? Six. Okay. The D orbital, or the D sublevel, has five orientations, holds ten electrons. And then the F has seven, holds how many? Fourteen electrons. Okay. So I want you to look at that funny-looking blank periodic table that I got you, which looks roughly like this one. It's a little bit different than this one that I have up here. Okay. So the way that the periodic table is arranged is pretty fabulous. Um, it, this Talking about the periodic table and the way it's arranged and what you can discern from it gets, brings out the nerd in me because it's really, really cool. It's one of the most useful piece, uh, tools you can use because there's so much information that can be discerned from the periodic table. It is arranged in order of increasing atomic number, but it's also arranged by its electron configuration. So we said an S orbital can hold two electrons. Okay, this right here on the periodic table we refer to as the S block. Guess how many groups are in there? Seven. Two. Group one, group two. That's because th both of those first two groups are only filling the last electron in the S orbital. Okay, this side happens to be filling the S1, so it's putting one electron, and then this one is putting the second electron, or the S2. So the whole way down, group one, they all end in an S1 configuration. It's just they get bigger with their period number. They go from 1S for hydrogen, 2S for lithium, 3S for sodium, etc. down the line, okay, or down the group, okay? The group two, starting with uh, beryllium, ends in 2S2. Its last electron is going into the S2 slot. In magnesium, the last electron going into the S2 slot. It's just... 2s, 3s, 4s, etc. down the line. Okay, over here we have the P block. Without counting, can you guess how many groups are in there? Six. Six, because it holds six electrons. Starting over here with P1, all the way over here to P3, I mean P6, sorry. Helium is a separate entity, okay, it's up there by itself. Hydrogen and helium are special. So you cannot have six electrons in a P orbital in a helium because it only has two to begin with. Okay, so it is actually 1s2 for helium. Okay, how many do you think in here are in the D block? How many electrons did we say it would hold? 10. Ten. Guess how many groups are in there? 10. And then down here, so this starts over here at D1 all the way over here to D10. So everything in this same column is ending in a D1. They're just moving up in energy levels. Okay, um, and then the bottom is the F block. Okay, guess how many are across there? 14. 14. Pretty cool, huh? So yeah. this is F1 over here, all the way over here is F14. So you just count over and say, oh, it's ending in F3 or 4 or whatever, okay? Where these two down here at the bottom in the F block fit in is they fit in here and here. This one fits here, this one fits here, okay? If you look at my periodic table on the wall, you'll see a star and a double star, okay? Those things down at the bottom are called the lanthanide and the actinide series. And the reason they're called the lanthanide series is because it fits right in after lanthanum. Because if you look at the atomic number, it goes from 57 and it skips over to 72. That's because those ones at the bottom fit in there. Same thing with the actinide series. It comes right after 89, which is actinium, and they fit in there. Okay. The reason they don't put them in there is because they wouldn't follow that pattern of having similar properties. Okay. So now that you know we've got the S block, the P block, the D block, and the F block, I want you to notice that the D block is always one less than the period number. So it's N minus one. Remember, N is our energy level, our principal energy level. 
And the reason being is that when they're filling electrons, yesterday we said the Aufbau principle says we build from the bottom up, lowest energy level possible. The 4s energy level, even though it's a larger principal quantum number, it's only filling two electrons. Do you think it requires more or less energy to fill and complete two or ten? It takes less energy to fill up a, a two. So it jumps up out of order and fills that 4s and then fall and then it starts filling the 3d below it. So that's why the because it's such a big d is so much bigger. Same thing with the f's. It actually takes a lot more energy. So those are actually going to be n minus 2. So they're going to be 2 less than the period number. These go in period 6. These go in period 7. So they're 2 left. That's where they fit in. Okay? Now that we know how that's arranged, let's talk about how we read the chart for electron configuration. When I start to read a book, where do I start my book? Top left. So I start up here, right? And I read my book. And, well, I'm drawing a line instead. I read my book, and I go across, and I finish this whole line, right? So I fill up my 1s's, right? When I finish reading that line, where do I go? Next, one. Next line, and I fill up these, 2s. And then after 2s, I fill it up, and then I get to the 2p's. Done with that, so I come back and start here, 3s, 3p. So when I'm doing my electron configuration, I'm literally just going to read across and fill up and stop where I need to stop, Okay. So are we ready to try this? Yes. yes. Okay. Again, we're going to remind ourselves, S has one orientation, two electrons. P has three orientations, six electrons. D has five orientations, ten electrons. F has seven orientations, 14 electrons. Okay. So we are going to start with a super duper easy one. We're going to start with beryllium. That's easy enough, right? All right, beryllium, BE, how many electrons does it have? Four. Four. Four electrons. Okay, Aufbau principles, we always, always start at the beginning. What is our first orbital available to us? Start at the top of the chart. What's our first orbital? 1s. How many electrons will it hold? Two. So put one up, then one down. What comes after 1s? Go to the next line. 2s. 2S. How many electrons will it hold? Every s orbital only holds two electrons. Yeah. So one up, one down. I have four electrons, so I should stop putting electrons in there. Okay. So that is my orbital notation or my orbital diagram. In order to write my electron configuration, I would say 1s2. 2s2. That better not start. With, I hate it when it does that. Okay? So that would be the electron configuration. The 1s comes here. The 2 is coming by the fact that there's two electrons. The 2s is here. Two electrons in there. Okay? Now, let's do the quantum number for the very last electron, which is this one. That's the last one we put in there, right? So our principal quantum number is our energy level, which is going to be this number right here, always that number. So it's 2. I'm in the second energy level. We have S, P, D, and F. Those are our available. Yesterday we defined those numbers as 0, 1, 2, and 3. So I'm in an S orbital, so I'm going to put a 0 right there. That's just telling me that's an S. Okay. The next letter, or the next number in our quantum numbers, tells us the orientation around the nucleus. There is only one orientation for an S, so this is going to just be zero, because there's only one choice. And then, was that electron spinning up or spinning down? Down, and how do we signify a down? Negative one-half. If it was up, it's a positive one-half. So that's how we signify the quantum numbers for the last electron, okay? You can signify the quantum numbers for any one of the electrons in there. I could have said, what are the quantum numbers for the first electron? We just tend to do the last electron, okay? But I could have, I could give you tungsten and say, give me the quantum number 
for the eighth electron in there, and you would have to figure out which is the eighth electron in there, and then you'd do it that way. Uh, I might. Not today, I'm not. Today we're only going to do last. So now we're going to do a little bit more complicated one. I did not. Sorry. Didn't mean to hit that button off. I like the green chalkboard better. So let's do oxygen. How many electrons does oxygen have? Eight. Eight. And how did you know that? Atomic number, right. Okay. Always I start at the bottom, right? So I'm going to start with 1s. I'm going to give it its two electrons. What comes after 1s on your chart? 2s, up and down. What comes after 2s? No, not 3p. 2p, who said 2p? There you go. How many lines do I draw for a p orbital? Three, yes, because it has three orientations. So this is 2p. How many electrons do I have left right now? I've shown four, right? Each arrow is an electron. So I've, I've depicted four electrons, so how much do I have? Four more. Four more. How do I fill those in there? What did we say yesterday? Um, Hun's rule. Everybody, gets one. everybody gets one before they get it down. So we got to give everybody an up, 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 and then now down. Okay? That configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p4 because there's four electrons in that p orbital. Okay? So now let's do our quantum numbers for the last electron right here. Two, energy level. We are in a p orbital. How do we signify a p? One. Okay? When we have the next number, we start with our negative one, zero, one. Remember, it's the negative of that to the positive of that number. So it's in the first slot, so that is a negative 1, and it's down, so it's a negative 1 half. Okay? So, yes? This one? Okay, how do I get the negative 1? So let's do this. Does everybody have this written before I erase it? Okay. Here we go. So S, P, D, and F, right? One slot, one, two, three slots, one, two, three, four, five. Remember the slots are the possible orientations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we said one, zero, one, two, three. Okay, that's that second quantum number. The third quantum number comes from where does it go? This is a zero. This is negative 1, 0, 1. This is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So whatever slot you put that electron, that becomes that third quantum number. Okay? Becomes that third so quantum number. So if it was the last electron, the last electron, do you mean the last slot? Because the last electron can go in any of those. Yeah, the last, like, so the, whatever slot the last electron is. Yeah, okay, yes. Whatever slot you put the last electron in, or the electron I'm asking about, that's that number. Okay, okay yeah. I was, I was confused by what you were saying. I got you now. Okay. So, any other questions? Are we tentatively kind of understand it? Because I'm going to do some more examples. Yes. I'm going to do some more examples. But, but thank you for letting me get through two examples before we started. Yeah. That two, one, negative one, one, two, or one half, what is that called? Quantum numbers. That's your quantum numbers. Okay? Yes? To tell you the address of the electron. So after we do a couple of examples in a moment, I'm going to give you a set of quantum numbers, and you could actually tell me where it's located based on that. Yeah. So the quantum numbers help you know... Uh, where is that electron? What, what's it? Is it spinning up? Is it spinning down? Is it a half complete orbital? Is it a fully complete orbital? It's just, it's just the way we describe the electron. It's just a way. It's like when we did the example yesterday of how do you know where to go sit at the concert? You look at your ticket. You go to the right stadium first. Then you go to the right section. Then you go to the right row, and then you go to the right seat. So it's kind of the same thing. Okay, it's kind of similar. Okay, let's do my favorite element. 
you want to... I've told you what my favorite element is. Vanadium, yes. Vanadium. It's got 23 electrons in it. You forgot why it's my favorite? Yeah. No, no, because it's your brain. Okay. 23, and it's in the fourth month, fourth period. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Here we go. Where do we always start? Y'all are going to tell me what to draw this time, but where do we always start? At top left. The top left, but we always start with 1S because that's our foundation, right? We can't build the roof first. How many will I put in there? Two. Two. One up, one down. What comes after 1S? One up, one down. What comes after 2S? 2P. That's when I usually do my favorite joke. Maybe not my favorite joke. 2P or not to pee, yeah. I love that joke. It is very funny. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to know if that's the answer. <laughs> What's after 2P? 3S. Up and a down. How many electrons are we at at this current time? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. We got 13 more to go, right? No, not 12 more. 11 more. Do that math again. <laughs> It's been a long day. What comes after 3S? Uh, 3P. Oh my gosh. There's, yeah, 3P. Still up, up, up. Down, down, down. Now, what comes after 3P? 4S. Am I going to fill that one up? No. Yes. Yes, I am. Now I'm at 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I'm at 20. What comes after 4S? Ah, read your chart, 3D, 3D. And how many lines does a 3D get? Five. five. One, two, three, four, and five. I have three electrons left, so I say up, up, and up. So then my electron configuration would be 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6. 4s2, 3d3. Is that why you kept, like for osmium, you just kept like less electrons? Yep. Okay. That makes more sense. Now. So now, last electron. I'm in energy level three. What number tells me that I have a D? Uh, two. 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 Negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. So we're at zero, and we're spinning up, so it's a positive half. And there we go. Okay. Oh, wait, so a quantum uh, number will always have four numbers? A quantum number is always, it's four numbers that describe them. Principal quantum number is your energy level. Okay. Angular momentum is, do I have an S, P, U, D, or an F? The magnetic quantum number tells you which orientation am I am around the... Nucleus, and then this tells you spin. Am I spinning up or spinning down? Because even if, and remember, Pauli's exclusion principle states that no no two atoms in the same element can have the same two electrons. Okay, so if I were to change that to this to a negative half, I have a totally different element then because then I've got to finish filling the rest of these. Let's do it in a different color. So if I said if I change this to an ooh, maybe black's not the right color to use on there. Let's go with bright yellow. Yeah, so if I change that one quantum number to a half, then I have to say up, up, down, down, and then that's my last one. So now I'm 3D, how many did I add? One, two, three, oops, I forgot that one. I added one, two, three, four, five, so now I'm at 3D8, right? Anybody want to see up there what 3D8 is? It is nickel. Yeah, it's nickel. It changes the element, right? By not having that same set of quantum numbers. That was a good question. Yeah, I added five to be able to get to the down slot of that one. Yeah. Okay, let's do tungsten. I keep doing that, and I don't mean to do it. I'm sorry, whoever's watching this video, that I keep messing that up. Okay? So we're not going to draw all the arrows for tungsten because we want to get done today. Okay? So, tungsten is tricky, though. We're going to see if you get the trick. Okay, we're going to see if y'all catch the trick.
Tungsten is tricky. It's got 74 electrons. Okay, we are not going to draw arrows for this. Y'all are going to tell me what I need to put. Are you ready? Yes. I will tell you we always start with 1s2. 1s2. But before we start, we're going to do something to make our lives a little bit easier. We're going to look at the chart. We see where tungsten is. And we're going to say, what does tungsten end in? No, that's its symbol. It's in the D group, so we know it's going to be ending in a D. It's in D, which is always one less than the period number, so it's 5D. So count over, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're going to just basically do this electron configuration until we get to 5D4. You ready, Eric? You can tell me what comes after 1S2. 2S2. Because we got 74. We're definitely going to fill up these, right? All right, let's go. 2S2, who comes going to tell me next? 2P6. And then? 3P6. 4S. 4S2. 3D10. Good job. 4P6. Now we go to the next line, and that is? 5S2. 4D10. Okay. And then 5P6. Oh, my God. Uh-oh, what happens after 5P6? 6S2. Uh, 6S2. Six 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 then what happens? 5D4. No, 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 no. What? It's 4F. 4F14. Give yourself a hand there, little lady. Oh, uh, yeah, because, okay, so. 4F14. I got to go catch those. Then I come back and say 5D4. There you go. Okay, so here's the deal. Here's the deal on that. If you are going through and just need to pick them up, you say 6S2, 4F14, then 5D4. However, if you're stopping somewhere in the F block, you have to include the D1 that comes first. So like if I was going to do, let's do, say, europium, which is EU, okay? I would say blah, 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 6S2, 5D1, 4F, whatever that is, 5, okay? Because the D1 technically fills before the first F, but it's just the D1. But if you're going all the way through and just picking up the F block, then you go ahead and list the F block first, and then you do the, what you end in. Okay? Don't do, don't, what I don't want you to do is go D1, 4F14, then D3, because the Ds need to be together. Okay? All right, let's do the quantum numbers for the last four electrons. Okay? Not the last four electrons. <laughs> Last electron. So here's what you do. We didn't draw the arrows, so we're going to just draw for that particular one. So we're going to say 5D is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5D. I've got 4 to put. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I know I've got 5 for the energy level. What number signifies that you have a D? 2. And then negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So that number is? One, and it's up, so it's a half. Okay? How did I get the two after the five? Yeah, SPDF, zero, one, two, three. It's in order. Yeah, remember when we said there's these available? Zero, one, two, three. The five comes from always this right here. Okay, now I'm going to challenge y'all. Ready? Um, Okay, let's see how we're doing. I'm going to give you some quantum numbers, and you're going to tell me what element it is. I will tell you it's the last quantum number, okay? So we're going to go with three, one. Oh, we're doing backwards. Zero and a negative half. So you tell me what element that is. So you tell me what element that is. Huh? Don't guess my 
Okay, so I'll walk you through this one, and then I'll challenge you again. So we know we have three. One tells us which, which shape? P. P. One is P. So one, two, three, negative one, zero, one. And it's a down, so I have to go up, 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 down, down. So it's 3P5. So which element is 3P5? No, chlorine. Oh, yeah, that makes sense because it, you don't start it. One, two, three, four, five. 3P5. Okay. Mm -hmm. you all, now you all want to try it on your own? Yeah, I think I get it now. Yes, Eric, what's your question? It's that's the any when we draw. Okay, so go back to this S P D F. Right, these are what signifies the uh, shape. So when we draw, so P is one, right? So we start with ne it, this is going to be negative L to positive. So we start with whatever this number is. You start negative one zero one. If it was if it was the five. Not the five. If it was the, the five lines, which is D, D we signify with a two, so we'd start with negative two, negative one, zero, and it's that way we're all doing it the same way. Okay. Are y'all ready? Uh, maybe. Okay. So let's go with... Four is the energy level. That's the first one is always the energy level. Two. So that means it's um, in the second one. D. Yes. It's four D. It's four D and then negative one. Wait, why is it four D? Because the two. Because the second two. number is a two. So that yep. A you got it. Oh. Did you have one she got it. It's zirconium. Um, Wait. What? What does the next? Four. It's zirconium. D. No. Chromium. Oh, chromium. Wait, no. Wait, no. Wait, what? Wait, what did you say? Zirconium. Yeah, why isn't it? Oh, you think it's zirconium? It's 42. Oh, so it is zirconium. Wait, 42. Yeah, 42. That's my lucky number. It is in the Because we said negative 1, and it's an up arrow, so it's the it's going to be the first arrow in there. So it's 4D2. So she went to the chart, found the 4Ds, went to the second slot. It's zirconium. Excellent. Oh, oh okay. it's D. I forgot it was 4D, so D was lower. 4 is the energy level. Okay. Where, where, where is, how do you find that? So look at your thing. 4 is always one less than the period number. Find the 4Ds. So like, is that the drum line? No, they don't. They, they have oh, fourth period. Oh, stop that! Well, how would I know that? They have fourth period. Don't you know that? No, I'm just kidding. You owe me chocolate, by the way. No. You do understand this better today. No, you said the video. Maker. You are lying. I know you understand Wait, that video. There's not one person that doesn't understand today's videos better than yesterday. Yes, sir. Yes, I am. <laughs> So, on record, Brandon Passell owes me chocolate. Okay. All right. I need to finish up a couple more things, a couple more de definitions, and then I will open it up for questions, and if we need to do another one, we can. So, a couple more things. Okay. Really quickly. Really quickly, we need to talk about a couple of definitions. Okay. These are the notes, yeah. They're, so, the highest occupied energy level, that is that number we've been putting the first thing on the quantum numbers, okay? So, when we were talking about tungsten, the highest occupied energy level would be, and for tungsten, would have actually been the 6 and the 6S, okay? Um, anything underneath, we call the inner, they're saying inner shell electrons or core electrons. A lot of times I call them or, core electrons or inner core electrons. They're not doing anything when we're doing these reactions with them. They're just kind of hanging out. They're full. They're happy. Everybody is trying to get to what's called an octet. And what an octet is, your highest energy levels are your outermost S&Ps, which is why, exactly, noble gases, that's exactly right, 
Um, but which is why the D is one lower because the S and the P are a higher energy level. Okay, so six plus two is eight. S holds two, P holds six. That makes eight total electrons. Eight is great. That's what they're all trying to get to. When we get to the bonding unit, you'll see that they're bonding based on trying to get to eight. Now, if you go on to take AP Chem, we go a lot more in depth than just eight is great. They're all trying to get to eight. We don't actually even use that as an explanation. But for this, we're good with eight is great. Everybody's trying to get to eight. So they will gain, lose, or share to get to eight. Okay? So that's what the, we're all looking for. Okay? But we have to be able to recognize how many valence electrons there are. And that's part of this process. So I'm going to end the video. And if you have questions, um, I'll be glad to answer questions. Or if you want me to do some more examples. Or you want me to challenge you with some quantum numbers, I can do that. Yes, all of them.